You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we're going to be throwing some punches this evening. I think so. <laughs> we're going to be doing lots of politics and public policy. We have as our guest a guy who doesn't hold back, you know, Reverend Larry Pickens. He's thrown himself right into the fire. I mean, he's a clergy guy. He's a guy who knows morals. He knows authority, moral authority. He's got connections with the guy upstairs, I think, you know. He may not have connections in City Hall, but which is more important, the connections with the guy upstairs, right? It's right. important. It's important. And no, all kidding aside, you know, there, we were just talking before the show, we're taping, and we're taping on December 15th. This is the day when the big guys get together in Slate, right? Right. And that just happened earlier today. And right. Uh, we had the opportunity to share uh, about now, ourselves. Now, somebody might just watching, they may wonder, Slate for what? Because they may not know Reverend Larry Pickens is running in the 2nd Congressional District Democratic primary. That primary is February 26th, I believe, right? That's correct. We're taping on December 15th, so if I did the math right, it's um, January, February, not, less than three months. Yes. Okay. About, I would say, 75 days or so. Um, the primary, because Congress and Jesse Jackson Jr., who had been there for what, 17 years? That's correct. Elected himself, he was elected in a special election himself. He ran into some problems, you know, some legal issues, some, you might even say mental issues, and some social issues. Lots of problems, so he resigned, right? That's right. And so what happens then is there's a special election to replace him. And people are, you know, popping up. We were saying, what, you got 16, 17 candidates, right? That's right. In that Democratic primary. We're wondering if the Republicans will give it a shot. You know, they just generally throw in the towel. That's what you love about this party, you see. The first thing they had to do was, before the end of the year, make sure that the people who are running the party, Chris Redonio, the Senate Republican leader, and Tom Cross, the House Republican leader, they, you know, make sure they got to keep their jobs. Because Republicans always say accountability is important, right? private sector account and so you have two people who've been presiding over the biggest mess you could possibly find that is the Republican Party and they got to keep their jobs after the mess became larger that's another story we don't want to distract from that <laughs> but you know somebody maybe the state GOP chairman Pat Brady a good friend well we don't have friends but somebody we're friendly with who was here just recently they may want to get on the stick and find a Republican to run against whoever you Democrats come up with right well I think they will have to sort that out for themselves. I, you're not going to give them any advice. I'm not, I'm not in the position to okay. advise them. <laughs> so you're there. You're there. Yes, you're there today to go before the slating committee. Yes, sir. And, you know, a lot of people say this is wrong, but the slating committee are the committeemen in the 2nd Congressional District. Yes. They have a way to vote. A really big guy there is committeeman Frank Zuccarelli, right? Yes. He's got about 30% of that vote. Well, he's got 20,000, 25%. Yes. You know, and Sandy Jackson, that's odd. Sandy, of course, is the alderman, Ann Alderman from Chicago. She is, of course, the wife of Congressman Jesse Jackson, Jr. Well, she's got about 10% of the vote. You didn't see her there. Yes, I didn't see her. I didn't she could have been there. Her. She could have been there. I may have missed her. But that's 10%. So Zuccarelli's got 25. Jackson's got 10. Committeeman Anthony Beal, who's an alderman from Chicago, he's got like another 10%, almost 10%. Yes. That's almost enough to win. If Beal and Jackson and Zuccarelli were to get together, they almost have the slate, almost the majority right there. And I say, I don't know that they have very similar views. Do you think they do? I don't think that they do. I think that uh, Committee Ms. Zuccarelli has uh, been very ardent in his, in his support of uh, Don Trotter. Don Trotter, okay. So, Senator Donnie Trotter. I'm trying to think, where was he in the news recently? <laughs> Anybody hear of him? Is he, is he even he's, in the news? He's been quite. Uh, you want to throw a punch? No, go ahead, throw a punch. I, I don't want to throw yeah, a punch. Reverend, come I, on, Reverend. I just, <laughs> I they said think. Obama didn't have sharp <laughs> elbows, you, and he did, you know. Yeah. You play basketball? I do. You play I with do. Barack? I've never played with yeah. basketball. Yeah, you got sharp with, elbows when you play? Yeah. I can't have sharp elbows. Give us, give us a punch I, here. Well, what I, do you got to say about Senator Donnie Trotter? I'll say this. Uh, I think that there is a need for uh, leadership that is responsive and committed to the community, and, and I think that that reflects every aspect of, of our lives. So, so I, I think that... Um, you know, the, the trouble that, that uh, uh, Don Trotter has faced is, is unfortunate. Uh, I don't want to uh, put myself in a position of, of being critical of him, but, but I do want to say that uh, all of this uh, relates to uh, character 
and, and how we portray ourselves in public. So he was arrested and arrested because he was going through the, what, metal detectors at the airport? That's correct. Uh, and, he's, and, and they were searching his baggage, carry-on baggage? Carry-on baggage. And would they That's find right. in one of those carry-on bags, they didn't find like can cotton candy? No, they found a gun. A and, gun. And, and a, a gun. And a clip. And, and uh, that could be, you're not supposed to carry guns right. on the plane. And what, what did he say? Well, well I understand he has a, a job as a uh, security person. Isn't that a little odd? If you're a state senator and you're a big guy, he's certainly big on the finance side, and the, he's one of the major guys in terms of budget issues. Yes. And what, he's moonlighting as a security guy? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I, I don't know how to How much do you think he makes that? as a security guy? I'm not sure what he makes what seventy thousand or eighty or ninety thousand as a state senator a state because senator. ninety thousand I think is that right? Sound right? Uh, he's got a few plum. He's got a few. I don't know. He's some. He's got a few positions that raise his salary right. a little bit more. Maybe That's ninety thousand. Right. So he can't get by on ninety thousand. He needs a separate job. That's okay. A lot of people. It's, it's supposed to be a part-time job, right? State senator. That's, yeah, <clears> That's right. So, but it does seem odd. So, like you're a state senator focusing on high-level budget issues, and then you you're packing, you're carrying a gun. <laughs> It's okay if he's got a license. Now, it couldn't he be concealed carry. We didn't have concealed carry. So, like, where does he put the gun usually when he's, like, as a security guy? Like, in his bag? Like, is his gym bag? Anybody got a gym bag around here? So, I get the idea. So, he's got it, he's got it like, in a travel bag? He's going to D.C.? Or where is he going? He was headed to D.C., I understand, to talk to some, uh, guys talk to about some uh, supporters. Supporters about the job. And so, why is he carrying a gun? Because he has, because he has a job as a security guy and he forgot the gun was there? That's, that's the story. That's yeah. the story. So he's charged with a felony, right? Well, and, that's, I think he had his day in court. Was he indicted? This, uh, no, Not I yet. think he, it's coming up. he has to go back and I think. But his, no, but his going, attorney, his attorney, his attorney, what's his name? I don't know, Mayor Brown, I think. But anyway, um, his attorney, I think, said, you know, look, this is a serious thing. He can't talk about this because right. he's charged, I think his attorney said he was charged with a felony. Right. I mean, I don't want to misquote. I understand you know. it's supposed to go to a grand jury. Yeah, no, no. So I think he may he may have meant he'll may be charged with right. the grand, with the felony by the grand jury. Right. So he can't talk about anything. Correct. So Donnie, Senator Trotter, we've asked you to come out here. We know. I'll tell you what, we won't talk about. <laughs> so, so you're using me to beat up on Donnie. No, <laughs> I don't beat up on anybody. Okay. You're not beat up. We're just informing the voters. All right. Because you say <laughs> it could be viewed as a matter of character. Sure. If you're charged. Now, it is America, so you're presumed innocent until until shown otherwise, right? That's right. And he's innocent until shown until otherwise. Guilty, right. But it could, some people, look, he's now running, if he runs, we think he's running, he's right. now running not in court where they have presumed innocent, he's running in the court of public opinion. Yes. Where, as you know, they can hang it or they can right. not. And I, I think that's the key, even, yeah. even uh, as you talk about the slate making process, uh, this is not Jesse Jackson's seat for which we're running, this is the people's seat. And the I people's seat, and yes. so it's not Mel Reynolds' seat because Mel held it no. before, right? No, it's not Mel. Mel had it rail ran into some problems, yes. and he was replaced by Jesse, who was going to yes. clean up things. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's. Wait a second. And, and, and Mel, Mel was going to clean up things because is he elected in a special election or Gus Savage? Uh, remember that name? He followed Gus Savage. Yeah. Uh, Didn't Gus run into some problems? Uh, he ran into some some difficulties as well. Yeah. well like anti-Semitism or something like that? Do I remember? think he had a number of, of issues. Allegations yes, of allegations that and other things. Him, yes. So what is that seat? Is that seat like haunted? The second congressional district seat? I mean you went from uh, Gus Savage and his problems to then Mel Reynolds and his problems. I mean he was convicted, convicted of what? some federal crimes in terms of misrepresentations on the financial side, wasn't he? No, and, also, and also underage sex, right. something like that? That's right. Yeah, that, those well, are nasty crimes. I, I don't think it's uh, the seat is haunted. I, I think that... People who've held it. <laughs> I think that uh, there are uh, many temptations that, that occur uh, when power is uh, at stake. And, and I think that you, you really have to be very grounded in order to avoid uh, those temptations. That, yes. And Reverend, if anybody's going to be grounded, it should be a Reverend. I, I you would are, hope so. You are ordained, would that be yes, correct? Yes, sir. I and am. you are currently a Reverend where? In the United Methodist Church at South Lawn United Methodist Church in Chicago. And where were you ordained? Uh, I was ordained here in the Chicago area at uh, in the Northern Illinois Conference of the United Methodist Church. So you are a Methodist? Yes. Okay. And when were you ordained? 
I was ordained uh, in 1984, and, and then I was ordained as a, as a uh, elder in 1987. Okay, so like you've been in the business of religion, if you want to call it that, for about while. almost three decades, right? Yes, sir. I have. So you understand it? Yes. What, how does the business now, we have something in this country called, it's, it's not here, here's the Constitution mm -hmm. of the United States. Okay. Get a shot of that. So we better get a better color for background, but maybe we can get a shot of that. This is a pretty important document, folks, just a minute to get serious. I mean, this whole thing is like, I don't know, 20 or 30 pages or something. It's not a lot. <clears throat> but this is perhaps the most important document this country has, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't quite say it, but, you know, the, um, there is something called separation of church and state. Yes. And they don't really use that phrase, I don't think, in the Constitution. But, you know, the idea is that, well, Congress can't establish a religion. Right. And Congress can't pass any laws that infringe improperly on religion. Yes. Right? So there's a separation. There's Congress and there's the church. But it's murky because, you know, well, we know that Reverend Jesse Jackson, father of Congressman Jesse Jackson, Jr., does a lot of things with his church. Some would say good, some would say not so good, but Operation Push, that has an impact on politics, does it not? Sure. And that's run out of his church, right? Operation Push is... And maybe not run out of his church, but they do, they do things at that church. They relate they? to the church, yeah. I would say. So the point yes. is it gets murky. We're not going to go into the, all the discourse right. of that, but you understand my point. Social advocacy and, and the You can have social church. advocacy by the church, but you can't really have... They're not supposed to go out and campaign. You, you don't engage in partisan politics. So Reverend Jackson yes. shouldn't say, go vote for when Congressman Jesse Jr. was running for something. He shouldn't tell people at the church to go vote for... Jesse Jr. or should he? Well, I, you know, I, I think that he would have to make that decision. Uh, as a pastor, yeah. I try to inform people. So uh, my objective is to say to persons, these are the candidates, offer the opportunity for the candidates to share uh, about their platforms and then give people the opportunity to make their their own okay. judgments about about elections. You don't tell them to go vote. I don't for tell them who to vote for. Now, could you? You've got how many people in your congregation? About three hundred. Three hundred people, right? Have you told these folks that you're running? In the I have told them that I'm running. Did you yes. tell them you'd like to have their support? Uh, I have asked for their support in the sense that I am their pastor, and that uh, I would like for them to be supportive okay. of the effort. But I haven't asked any of them to vote for me. Okay, so in a sense, you've got an organization there. Yes. And that's maybe, the, is that, would you say that's your base, those people at that church? They're very, very essential supportive of you. to what yeah. I'm doing, yes, okay. and I could not Part do of your it, base. Right. I could not do it without okay. my church, right. Now, Robin Kelly, who's chief of staff over in Cook County Board President Tony Pricklinkle's office, right? Yes. I don't, did she resign? I don't think she resigned. I, I had. She's entered the race I, officially. I know she's right? entered the race. I don't know that she has to, but yes. that would be her base, sort of. Her contacts, people she knows right. over there. We don't know if Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle has yet said whether she will endorse her. I have Robin not County. heard that. Donnie Trotter's got a base. He's got yes. the 200,000 people that he represents in his Senate district. So, all kidding aside, it's not a kidding matter about him being arrested. And then he told me somewhat recently, he. According to you, what was the statement he made about he, he wanted to have some crackers, or what was that? What was that statement? Well, the, uh, Channel 2 News did a, uh, uh, a story about yeah. uh, a speech that he made, and at that time uh, made a statement about Springfield having uh, a lot of crackers. And uh, crackers... Uh, Were they like Ritz crackers, or uh, what? Well, you'll have to ask him what when do you he comes he, on what your do you show. Think, what do you think he meant, Reverend? <laughs> well, I, I, I listened to what he said, and, yeah. and, and uh, so I take him at his word, and he said that crackers represents anyone who oppresses people. So that's... He's the, saying there are a lot of people in Springfield who oppress people? That's, that's the way he explained Do you think he himself. meant state reps and state senators? That's... that's I never really got You think clarity. he meant Senate, Senate President John Cullerton's a cracker? I, I he's not in Springfield, but he spent some time in Springfield because he's a Senate president. You don't, you don't yeah, know whether that... I don't know if he... Do you think he meant yeah. Speaker Mike Madigan? I mean, he's in Chicago, but he also spends time. Yeah, he's the speaker. Right. 
he, he very may he very well may have. But so Johnny Donny Trotter may have some fences to mend. Do you think? I think so. Okay. I think so. Come on on here, Donnie. Clarify that statement. <laughs> We're fair and balanced. We can get the issues out. You want to clarify it? <laughs> right? Right. Okay. Napoleon Harris, you know him? He's a new I state senator. I just met him today. Yeah. I, I don't know him, but I just understand. Just elected state senator? Right. right. And now he wants to go become Congress before yes. he's become a real senator? Well, and the man is you know, making, that's you, what, upward mobility, if like, you real are fast. putting yourself out for Congress, or any elected office, you have to be pretty ambitious and mm -hmm. you have to have a certain level of arrogance that propels you to do something like this. So I, I don't fault anybody. So let's get that list up there if we can. We got that list of the people who may be running or are running in the second congressional district. Well, we don't have that list up there. We can't get, okay. So we're gonna run it by there, okay. Every once in a while I, I overstep my reach and you know, it's a humbling <laughs> experience when I do that. You know, it's not just Donny Trotter who makes a mistake here. We all make them. We all do. <laughs> That's right. It's a humbling experience. That's right. Okay. All right, but we have Reverend Pickens running, obviously. We've got Robin Kelly from the, who ran, I think, for state treasurer. And uh, as we said, she's in the Cook County State, Cook County Board President, Tony Preckwinkle's office, Donny Trotter, state senator, Napoleon Harris, recently elected state senator, is that right? Yes. Former Viking, you know? Right. Pro, pro ball pro line, pro linebacker, football player. Toy Hutchinson, another state senator. Anthony Beal, Anthony Beal, a Chicago alderman, also a committeeman in that. And Anthony Williams, a competitor of yours, a reverend, right? Right. I, I actually, guy. Yeah. I was his mother's paper boy when I was a little boy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, You've grown up. Yeah, no we've more, grown right? up now. Debbie Halverson, who was a congresswoman and uh, mm -hmm. sort of been redistricted out. She lost in her attempt. She ran for this seat in the was it in the primary before? Or what did she run That's for? That's right. She, she ran, ran for that? In November. Did she run? Or was it a different seat? Was it? He, she ran. She ran She ran against Jesse. Yes, in okay. the primary. Yes. Now she might think she has a better chance because it's a bigger field. And she is so far maybe the only white person. I've read off eight names. I think that we think they're about 16 or 17, right? I think she is the only well, that may help. Anglo person. Yeah. That's it's that a 54%, 54% African American district, right? That's right. Okay, and about 46 other, and a good chunk of that is Hispanic, 12%, yeah. maybe a third right. is white. All right, so race, is race the issue here? Well, I think that this uh, election is about representation, and uh, I don't think that a strategy centered around splitting the, the black vote and, and uh, galvanizing white vote is really what this election okay. is about. Let's cut. We only got 10 minutes here, so I've been fooling around too much. My fault, not yours, but we're going <laughs> to ma make up for it in the next 10 minutes. Okay. Because as far as I know, there's several major issues here. There's jobs. Yes. There's the third airport in Piatone and the economic yeah. development that might make. Right. And then there's the issue uh, uh, of education. There's some people think, you know, we should have charter schools and more competition, innovation. And perhaps school vouchers. We talked about that. We're going to talk about that issue. Mm -hmm. Some people say it's about taxes, you know, on the federal level. You know, maybe you need more taxes because you could then do more things that you might want to do, or maybe a little less so you could generate more employment. So we got to get to your philosophy. Let's start running. Uh, did we leave out any major issue? We'll come back to other issues. Are those three those, key? That's the airport, subs jobs, subs taxes, school vouchers, charter yes. schools, whole yeah. issue of education. Let's start with school vouchers, okay? Because a lot of people say that's a state issue. A lot of people say it has nothing to do with federal education. Right. What do you say? Well, I, I think uh, school vouchers ought to be one of the items that we put on the table for uh, a discussion about what the future of education policy ought so to possibly, be. possibly, you know, in the city of Chicago, we spend folks about budget of about $6 billion, give or take a few hundred million. And we got about 400,000 students. Divide one into the other, what do you get? 15,000 per kid per year. It's a lot of money. So if we go to these people and we say, if I say to you, if you could do this, and we'll come back to you why it's relevant. Mm -hmm. If you could take that 15,000 and give it to the parents and say, if you're happy with the kids, mm -hmm. in the pu if you're happy with your public school, the kid stays there, the money stays there, there's no change. But if you want to change mm -hmm. to a private school, go ahead, be our guest. Out goes the kid, out goes the cash. Mm -hmm. and they got a shot at maybe improving their plight. Right. Is there any reason on God's green earth, and I say that with all respect, Reverend, any reason on God's green earth when I've just been recently told by people who know 
that the percentage of kids reading at grade level in fourth grade in CPS, Chicago Public mm -hmm. Schools, black kids, probably about 20%. 80% are not reading at grade level. That's about the number, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not good. It's not good. Kids are dying in Inglewood because, you know, they opt out of the schools, they join gangs. Rational choice. If you can't learn how to read and they won't teach you how to learn to read, it doesn't do you a damn bit of good to stay in school. Might as well get out and, you know, shoot them up. Kids are dying. Kids are getting caught, okay? Mm -hmm. This is no time to, you know, as Barack Obama said here, okay, I'll quote Barack. You know, when he was talking and running in the 2004 Democratic Senate primary. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, we can have people who are for the war, which is a big deal, and people are against it. He said, what we can't have, this is what Barack Obama said on public affairs, what we can't have is somebody running for office who won't take a position, won't say where they are right then. He said, oh yes, like a year later, all sorts of people were against the war and this sure. and that. But when the time was up, when the vote was going on, Obama spoke out and these other guys didn't. He said, we can't tolerate. You can differ with Barack. We can't. So Larry Pickens, I'm giving you the chance, and anybody else who wants to be on from the 2nd Congressional District, if you're a fan of somebody else and they're not on this show, that's their decision, not mine. I'll put anybody on, okay? You get in touch with me, jbcg at aol.com. Kelly, Trotter, Harris, Hutchinson, Beal, Williams, Halverson, or the others. Excuse me, I can say this. Get your ass over here. Get over to public <laughs> affairs, okay? Because people want to know, and I'm turning now to you right now. I want an answer. Do you support school voucher, school choice? Are you going to give people some choice to get out of a failing school? 20% sure. are making it, 80% are failing. If they want to stay, fine. Give them that choice. You want to do that? Sure. Well, we talked earlier about uh, free markets. All right. And I believe that it may be necessary for education to be put in a free market context. Maybe, but you're not ready to say yes or no. Yes or no. Barack Obama said no on that war in 2002, and he became president of the United States yeah. because Edwards said yes, Hillary said yes, and the Democratic yeah. Party, the Democratic primary, he said, this well, guy spoke out. Could well, you speak out here, sir? I, I'm speaking out. I, I think that- You said may. I, I, hear, I didn't hear yes. I think I'm speaking out. Okay. I think, and I think when he was on your show, he, he took the same position that, I, that I'm taking, that I think it needs to be uh, part of the discussion. On vouchers he yeah, took that vouchers, position, but on the exactly. war he said, okay, okay, yeah. you're going to go that far, yeah. part of the discussion, yeah. okay? What about charter schools? Should that be part of the discussion or would you say yes on no, that? No, I think, I think charter schools are you're ready to uh, say important. Yes, yes okay. I would support Get more charter that. schools, yes. get more choice, yes. okay? You're going to upset the teachers unions with those statements. I, I understand, I understand that. that, and yeah. and I think that that's, I think it has to be a competitive you process. You got with that, that, what is that, the five letter word that rhymes with calls, okay? Because you're, you're taking them on, right? Yes. We can say that, right, Larry? Yeah, he's getting me to go <laughs> ahead on that. I can say that. Right. Rhymes with calls. I don't know what that could be, okay? You got that. Yes, so I'm, I'm supportive Because you believe that. you didn't spend three, 30 years in the clergy only not to help low-income people who are dying in these areas. Right. Not just learning how to, not, okay, we got to go quick. We got to go quick on to Piatone. Piatone. You know, Jesse Jackson Jr. spent all that time on it yeah. and nothing. 17 years almost, okay? Is right. it time to say no, that that idea has come and gone? Are you going to get, if you get elected to Congress, you're going to keep, you're going to keep flailing away at that horse? Or are you going to say, okay, let's get jobs some other way? This is not working. Because well, Rahm Emanuel is never going to say yes to that. You know that, and I know that, and Rahm knows that. Right. Come on and tell us, Rahm, but you're never going to say yes to <laughs> Piatone, right? Well, and nothing, you're never going to say yes to an airport in the third, a third airport in the south side because you're afraid what it does to O'Hare, what it does to Midway. Your job is to make the world safe for Chicago and your friends there, right? I'm not saying it's wrong, well, Rahm. Well, am one I of right? the things I, right? I mean, right? What I would I'm right, want I'm to right, do, right? I mean, what I would want to do is, is have that conversation with, with the leadership in, in Piatone uh, and in that county to talk about. Will County? Yeah, in Will yeah. County, to yeah. talk about what uh, the possibilities are. I, I think yeah. that, uh, that airport is important to, to them. Uh, I understand the, the realities okay. of, of where it is. And at those this point. people are important to who becomes congressman. Absolutely. Or so, congresswoman. So they, the second. they have so, to be listened yeah. to. Yeah, so you're going to do that. Absolutely, because okay. I think that uh, I want to represent the entire district. Uh, and although uh, I have an experience that's very much centered in Chicago, I also believe that uh, representing Will County and, and the south suburbs is critical to to uh, making this this There work. are some other ways to get jobs here, okay? You know, we're gonna go through it quickly, but there is a thing called right to work. You've heard that? Yes. 
You know, you know I, people say, oh, Jeff, sometimes you take a position, you know? <laughs> yes. Well, Mr. Lisnick. You know that guy you were interviewing? I was on a show. You ever watch him when he interviews some of the liberal, liberal professors over here and says, oh, basically he takes them through their paces that they say, oh, right to work states, you'll get a lower salary, you may right. get more jobs, but really that's not a good thing. Right. Did you say that, Paul? Paul, come on on here. Talk about it. You know, <laughs> let's get this straightened out. It sounded to me like that's what you were saying. So I want to know, is he right? Because maybe there's a correlation. Maybe in a right to work state, you're able to get more competition, more people who are not unionized into jobs, and maybe salaries go down, but more people are employed. And I'm asking you, are you better off being unemployed at a higher wage or employed at a lower wage? Reverend Larry Pickens, if that's the choice. If I'm right, we'll come back to it. If I'm right, yeah. maybe you're better off being employed at a lower wage. Paul, think about that. Interview me, Paul. Okay. <laughs> I got an ABD from you know, Chicago. I'm as good as right. those guys. I'm, I'm more fair and balanced than they are, right? Yeah. You'd, you'd swear to that, right? On a stack of Bibles, so to speak. Well, the, <clears throat> All right. the, the uh, unemployment rate for African Americans in the United States is about 13%. And, and for double, white folks, for white folks, double, it's double that. Double uh, the unemployment rate. Because, because we have minimum wage laws to say to black people, you can't compete. Your skills are less because you went to crappy schools and we didn't do a thing about it. Now we've turned you out. Your skills on average are less. But I Nothing don't inferior. Your skills on average are less because you got less, uh, you got an inferior education. We want, some people say, well, let them start at a lower wage than but a person with more that skills. I don't believe that's the reason. I believe you, why, why are Why are black people, why I, is the unemployment rate higher than the black They don't have the kind of social networks oh. that enable them to enter into the professional I don't think so. Context. I think they need the opportunity to compete. Look, I've been low skilled at some point in my life and one way I competed was I took a lower wage, okay? It's nothing to do with race. It's everything to do with skills. If you've been cheated and black people, they've been cheated. Larry, you know that. They've been <laughs> cheated out of a good education. The well, folks at the North Shore, oh, oh they get a good education because their zip code is right. The folks, the 85% minority kids in the city of Chicago, their zip code isn't right, and they get a not so good education. Even though we're spending a lot of money. You're cheated, Larry. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. I, I think that okay. we have to find ways to, to connect those persons who have the skills, who want to work, with the people okay. who have the jobs. So you're saying these people want to work, they Absolutely. want to do, okay. We're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, but I very much want to thank our guest, Reverend Larry Pickens. Thank you so much thank for you. coming. It's Good gone fast, right? You're going to come back? Absolutely, If please. those guys don't, and those ladies don't come back, I'll we're going to put, we're going to put this guy <laughs> in every week. Really, you're going to see it. The second congressional district report. Yes, <clears throat> and we'll get to the items that you didn't cover today. Which are? Uh, education. Uh, well, you we talked a little about bit about What do you that. want to say about education? Uh, well, I think education is key uh, because it is a national issue. It is something around policy okay. making okay. that we have to be uh, addressing. So, what else didn't you tell uh, the voters that you want to tell them? Well, I want the voters to know that, that I'm about inclusivity, and that means I want to represent the entire district. Black, white, Black, Asian, white, Hispanic. Hispanic. And exactly. what else didn't you tell the voters that you uh, want to tell them? And that uh, I'm a lawyer who understands lawmaking, but I'm okay. also a pastor who's able to respond to uh, needs in a, in a specific way. So I bring those two together. What else didn't you tell the voters that you want to tell? I think the voters need to understand that we, we live in a, a global context, and that means that uh, not only does uh, our work within the district uh, uh, force us to be responsive, but also we have to respond to some global realities that impact us as well. And what else did you tell the voters? Um, I'm, I'm grounded. Gun control. More guns, less crime? Well, I think gun control is an, is an issue Look, that people we need walk to into a school, they shoot them up. If somebody had a concealed gun, if somebody could maybe shoot the bad guy.